Good evening. This is our last lecture for Supernatural Fiction. Um, tonight's topic is uh, the ghost in the machine, intercom to internet, kind of random technologies. Um, I've always found intercom sort of spooky, disembodied voices. The internet has loads of potential for hauntings. Um, I'd love to see uh, some um, of your exercises touch on uh, what's um, happening with social media right now and um, all the ramifications of uh, messages that are out of time. Um, I'm just going to uh, give you a loose overview of where we are and um, where we're wrapping up and uh, starting in an unusual place tonight um, with music instead of um, writing. The video I uploaded is um, actually called IBM 1401. It's a piece by the Icelandic composer Johan Johansson who uh, died suddenly in March. Um, he's a real person. Um, he was the composer for um, Theory of Everything uh, Sicario, um, I think it's called Arrival, uh, so he's, um, he was a, a, a great film composer, and the reason why I chose him is, um, or, or his, uh, music, is because it's, it's quite haunting in this, um, uh, technological way, um, just to set the mood. So I'm going to read a little bit about the piece, uh, that I put up, um, so the first the first image you have is, a, is the video that goes with uh, the, the piece, which is from 2006. Um, and here's a little bit of history about it, and then I'll talk about the reading and um, a recap of um, where our topics have taken us thematically in terms of the contemporary ghost story. Um, the IBM 1401 was the first mass-produced computer, and it was also the computer that my, oh, so this is, a, I'm sorry, this is an interview with Johan Johansson. Um, it was also the computer that my father worked on as an engineer and programmer in Iceland. One of the things he did was to program these little melodies on the computer using punch cards, essentially making it into a musical instrument. When it was taken out of service in the early 70s, they made a recording of this music, like a farewell ceremony, a funeral for this computer. So I decided to write a requiem for this computer using the music that my father programmed on it. It says something about our relationship to machines, about nostalgia, obsolescence, and age. Icelandic composer Johan Johansson pits the string orchestra against the computer, a struggle known as man versus a machine. In 1971, Johansson's father recorded the sound of the IBM 1401 mainframe computer using radio receiver and a reel-to-reel -reel tape machine to capture the electromagnetic waves emitted by different computer functions. So uh, that's a little bit about how this piece happened, because it, it actually contains these old clips from the 70s. Um, and then there's a part called uh, IBM 1403 printer, which I did not include. So you just have the first few minutes, which sounds barren, propelled by no more than the glacial sounds of the radio frequencies and the monotone voice of the instructor. So you also have in that piece um, sort of splicing of voices and uh, radio. Um, it's, it's very, very eerie. Um, and then uh, this comment, which is quite interesting. Um, Johansson and uh, the dancer who danced to this piece called, or, uh, her name was uh, Orma Stadler, um, approached the project with a belief that a computer could have a soul, or at least stim simulate one, and the gently unfolding passages of Fortissimo and piano, pian Pianissimo imply an inner voyage of new sensations and fresh modes of communication, whereas anyone's guess if Johansson had been playing the computer or the computer t him. Contrasting the clipped instructional detail of a technical manacle, ma sorry, manual with a butterfly metamorphosis of the 14, 401's first strings, Johansson pulls off a master stroke of poetic disparity between the mechanical and the spiritual. Um, somehow, Douglas Trumbull's choreographer Co sorry, choreography for 2001 A Space Odyssey is recalled when techie hardware met Strauss's Blue Daniel Waltz in a symphony of space. Uh, that's another um, location which, um, if you choose, uh, you're welcome to explore, which is um, 
the realm of science fiction, but also in uh, Space Odyssey 2001, there is that ghostly element. And there's a piece by J.G. Ballard uh, called uh, Astronauts, which is included in this uh, anthology um, ghost uh, by uh, um, Louise Welch, who's here in Glasgow. Um, so astronauts are... Uh, also material for uh, the contemporary ghost story. Um, for this week, uh, so that's just the opening of this piece that uh, uses uh, the computer sounds of, of the human voice, um, printer sounds, um, uh, instructor instruction manual being read out loud, all of that kind of spliced together. And um, at this point in uh, the 21st century, that um, bricolage is uh, certainly uh, what happens to us with technology, the sort of mixing up of pieces, uh, old and new, and, and uh, shards and shreds, things that somehow there's been a great explosion and all, all the fragments are everywhere. Um, so that sort of that sort of piecemeal approach um, is part of uh, the texture of um, th where the ghost story is right now, and with with some writers at least. Uh, so um, we are going to be uh, reading Graham Greene. Uh, well, it's one piece, but has two names: um, "A Little Place Off the Edgware Road" or "All But Empty." It's just the same. Joe Hill's 20th Century Ghost, which takes place in a cinema. Um, Hilary Mantel's Terminus, um, I guess, uh, or you could guess where that it, where that takes place. Tannery Dewey's Prologue 1963, um, which I, I hope you will enjoy. Um, and the questions uh, that I'd like you to think about in relation to those stories. Where does the contemporary story take place? Uh, what time frame are we in? When? Um, are, are time frames like you'll find in the Graham Green simultaneous? So two things are happening in uh, two different places um, and they overlap um, in some way. Um, what's the medium? Is it um, supposed to be reality or is there some kind of recording um, involved? Um, what's the vehicle? Trains, planes, spaceships, uh, cars, um, I'm sure there are others. And then settings, the contemporary settings, um, I come up with a few hospitals, sweatshops, um, I'm reading uh, a anthology right now called Cold Iron that is ghost stories of the last five years. Um, really recent supermarkets, alumni gatherings at uh, universities and high schools. Um, there's one story that takes place in uh, the living room of... Um, a young woman and her husband has been sent to Bosnia and there's a lot of uh, telecasting going on so the television is running all the time. Uh, video games, answering machines, defunct email accounts, Facebook pages. Um, the climate seems to change for the contemporary ghost story and suddenly um, we have tsunamis, volcanoes, torrents, um, polar bears that have drifted to the wrong part of the world on ice flows. All of these things um, point out an incongruity, and that's just a great um, fisher for ghosts, for spirits. So um, I wanted to ask you um, what you find incongruous where things are not matching up for you, because that is um, that is exactly where ghosts seem to spring. Um, and then, uh, last of all, um, but very importantly, there's a sort of um, emotional element to um, 
Ghosts of Now. Um, what's the feeling of uh, what's that, what's that spiritual feeling? Um, the feeling of presence of of being haunted. Um, if whether that's a sort of pressure in the mind, um, whether that's going with an emotional state or uh, psychological disturbance or psychiatric conditions. Um, anxiety has been thematic, especially in the 20th century, but we also have agitation, worry. Um, Johan Johansson, in an interview I'll put in your resources, talks about melancholy. Um, and then uh, one that uh, I think really reaches me is nostalgia. And the Tenerife Douay Prologue 1963, like the story by Tim O'Brien, is um, it's that's that is that's the emotion from which the ghost story derives is this longing for the past and longing for um, the way an important an important person in the narrator's life used to be. So that is something you can also harness. Um, I'll just read, uh, the very last bit of Louise Welsh's, um, introduction to her anthology. Uh, I like what she says here and then we'll close out and I, I will, um, be uploading a bibliography for you, um, in the next week, reading the rest of your pieces and your exercises and um, if there are any more stories that I can scan and attach, which relate to some of your um, projects, um, I will definitely do that as well. But it's been um, interesting to teach you from afar, and I wish you um, luck with your writing. Um, and this is from Louise Welsh. I began this introduction by stating that a few of us want the dead to return. That is untrue. Sometimes it is what we want most of all. Ghost stories disturb, entertain, and enlighten us about the world we live in. They are occasionally, they also occasionally grant us a glimpse of those who have gone before. As Tim O'Brien writes in The Lives of the Dead, in a story which is a kind of dreaming, the dead sometimes smile and sit up and return to the world. Um, good night, and uh, I'm awaiting your latest. Thank you.